expectation, verse 22. Paul took confidence in this guy because of the grace of God in him. But Paul is so overcome with, with uh, grace himself, he has expectation of his God. His God is a gracious God. What do we expect from our God? One more thing, prepare a guest room for me. Because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Where is he? He is in Nero's jail. Chained up. I'm a prisoner in chains. I said that earlier for us, isn't he? I'm in chains. He became my son while I was in chains. Paul is not inhibited in sharing his faith, in bursting with the grace of God at people, just because he's chained to, to a soldier or a wall or something. Prepare a guest room for me. You've been praying for me. You love me. Because of the way grace has been active in your life. So you've been praying. So I expect to be released. And I expect to come and see you soon. Because I've just got a heart for Ephesus, that place over in Asia. And I've got a heart for that Lycus Valley. And I've got a heart for all the trading connections where the gospel has been going forwards as a result of the work I've been able to do there. I'm coming back. Here room ready. Make a bed. Make a bed. Perhaps instead of the word expectation, I should have chosen the word expectancy. Paul is stuck languishing in jail in Rome, the prisoner of a godless, twisted, violent emperor. Is he? He is not. He is the prisoner of Christ Jesus, he says earlier on, on whose authority Paul finds himself in jail. He is patently running a mission to Rome from his cell, leading multiple missioners. He's going to say who they are in a minute. Conscious that many people are praying for him, he anticipates greater usefulness to come as he lives expectantly, hoping for return to Asia, to the Lycus Valley area, part of what he's doing down in Ephesus, to carry the work of God forward. And, and a good man I know, leading lots of student work in our land, he gets teased for the way he posts, you know, overtly optimistic tweets about what's happening through, uh, through student missions and, and, and he's constantly <coughs> using this hashtag, hashtag expectant. One of his senior female workers picked it up recently. The people was nearly choked seeing a single Christian girl putting expected on the hashtag. Because <laughs> that shouldn't be. Um, but, but, you know, I've had a word with him about it. I don't know if he's got the point. Um, <laughs> you can't just go saying that. Seriously. Paul is brimming with expectancy. And it's born of his living close to theological reality. He's not Nero's prisoner. He is Christ's bond servant. He is not removed from the Great Commission. He's called to it whatever insalubrious location he finds himself in. Even Albie's in the queue. Or stuck in a Roman jail. He is not stuck where he is. Lost to the ministry. Washed up. Finished. Grace teaches you this. It teaches you that God, your God takes and rescues the hopeless. That everything is dependent on nothing but his grace. That actually, yes, it is useless. It is hopeless, unless he shows up. But when it was hopeless, and when it was useless, he has shown up. Grace. Cross. Salvation. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. One more thing, <clears throat> that is, at the same time as this grace you're going to proclaim to the watching world and the way you treat the lessons, at the same time as that, make the bed, says Paul, there's a God, he's gracious, you've been praying, so I'm coming. You can reckon it'll need to be more than one bed. And Paul has slipped back here from the singular that he was using for the bulk of the letter into the plural. You guys make beds. <laughs> We're coming! The boys are coming back. For you. For your benefit, says the Greek. But it's going to be more than Philemon who need to make the bed. Because Paul is coming with his team again 